Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 21. How is the faithful city, Jerusalem, become a harlot, sold herself, a woman that sells out for a price? Jerusalem has sold herself out to all the world. We know what a harlot is. It was full judgment. Righteousness lodged in it. Now when it's full of judgment, that means it was looking at its sins, it was looking at what it was doing wrong, and reaching out to God for the right. Paul tells us we're to judge ourselves. And in Jerusalem, judgment was going on that guilty parties were found to be guilty. And the proper sentence according to the law was going on. There was no bribery. There was no looking at this man in his position and this person because of their color and this person because of their religion. Everything was righteous. But now, murderers. People are being killed. The prophets of the Lord are being killed. People are being killed for land. They're being killed for money. They're, that's where America is today. It shed much blood of murder. Murder is when you plan to do something. And you go about it. It's not accidental killing. It's not that a kid runs out between two parked cars and you hit him. It's in your heart. Proverbs 1 says a group of youths want to go out and kill somebody for his goods. They killed the prophets to shut them up. That's what Jesus speaks about when he says that the, there was a certain man that built a vineyard, hedged it about, and he sent his servants there and they beat him and they killed him. The silver has become dross. It's, it's, it's diluted. The wine mixed with water. Silver is being cankered. It's not pure. And the drinks are being sold by mixing them with water. You're not getting full wine. You're getting a watered down substitute. It's not full. When you go in there, I want a glass of wine. Well, you're getting a little wine and you're getting water. Sort of like today when, when you buy something, it's full of corn syrup. It's full of active ingredients that you don't even know how to pronounce. What you're buying in the stores today is not, it's not pure. It's not the original thing. It's full of junk. Unnecessary. When you buy a ham, you go to the deli and you look at the, I saw the package of ham and it, Processed with water, or 98% water. Milk is water. It's not pure milk. Beer is water. Check in how much water it takes to make beer. Thy princes are rebellious. The government officials. And companions of thieves. Oh, look at that. Their friends are thieves. You read Proverbs chapter 1? What Solomon said? Not to go after them? Not to be part of them? Turn away? The government is involved with rebellious and thieves. Everyone loveth gifts, bribery, Christmas, birthday, anniversary. And follows after rewards. Wanted, dead or alive. Ten thousand dollars will pay. Call this crime line and we'll we'll pay you if, if we use your tip. Well, I'm gonna do it for a crown. I'm gonna do it for a little trophy. I'm gonna do it for a, a reward ribbon. It's not done for the heart. It's not done for the Lord. They judge not the fatherless. 
There's that fatherless again. The father dies in the household, and then all of a sudden the government and the people ruin their lives. Take advantage of. Neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. She's got a case, and it doesn't even show up in the courtroom. She's got something going on in her life, and no one cares to hear it. Well, my husband just died. Who cares? Where, where's the money? You want to talk about a close-knit society? The Jews were. The law told them, you're to take care of your poor. You're to take care of the father. You're to take care of the widow. That's what exactly what the church is doing today. I should say not doing. Because even Stephen's time, they had a problem with, with the widows. They had to get deacons. They're feeding the, the homeless people who don't want to have anything to do with the Lord and will show up just for the meal. You're providing turkey meals, you know, for the, the, giving money to a kettle. Instead of the gospel, you, you're handing out turkey dinners to people who will go buy booze and cigarettes and things they ought not be buying. Is that an application when you go to the, these religious centers? Oh, I like to have a free Thanksgiving meal. All right, what do you do with your money you got now? Do you have a pet? Well, if you can afford a pet, you can you can go buy yourself a meal for you and your family. But those that are really in need, this widow, this fatherless family, there's no income coming in. Women didn't go to work. And it was a farm. The work had stopped. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord steps in, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Let's get to know who God is. God is about to pronounce judgment upon Judah and Jerusalem. And he's going to have Isaiah and Jeremiah. Tell them what their sins are. Before God, before he passes judgment, will warn you. And will put the degree out. When you go into a courtroom, and, and when you're arrested, you have the right to say to that police officer, what am I being arrested for? You have in a courtroom. These are the charges. And God, before he pronounces the judgment upon an individual or upon a nation, he says, this is your charge. And the free will that God has, you can get right with God, as we talked about last night, or you can just keep on going the way you're going and let the let the axe fall. And verse 24, you better know who God is. There are people who have visited and live in Daytona Beach, Florida, who live and visited Norwich, Connecticut. And cannot say, I don't know, because they have been involved with a, with a sign ministry, with street preaching, with gospel tracts being handed to them, telling them exactly who God is. Well, I didn't know there was a way of salvation. Uh, you heard about a Savior called the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you like me to call that family up? Would you like me to call those two individuals that came knocking on your door? Would you like me to call up that co-worker that worked with you all those years? Would you like me to bring up that gospel track that you read in the, in the potty at Walmart? See, God will pronounce judgment of who he is. And what you have done before he does it. I believe that God will never do judgment upon somebody without warning. Satan's the one that pulls on Job. And Job never found out what, why Satan did it. 
But in the eyes of God, by the 42nd chapter, Job got right with God. God says, Nathan, Nathan, I want you a, I want you a message to tell David. He's guilty of two sins. Tell him. Now David got right. Had David not gotten right and told Nathan, you listen, you're going to lose your neck or I ain't listening to you, I don't care no more, you would believe that a judgment would have fallen upon David himself. Well, you say his four sons, that's evil. That is a result of his sin. Sin has consequences. But when you rebel and rebel against God, judgment will fall upon you for the worse. Ah, I will ease me of my adversary and avenge me of my enemy. All those that hate God will be cast in the lake of fire. You know, God's going to shift out. He's going to divide in the end, eternity, who really loves him and who doesn't. And if you don't want God, if you don't want anything to do with God and his word, he'll, he'll put you in your place. I guarantee that. You will be absent from God like you always wanted. But be sure to know that everyone who, who has that has had a witness of some form by God himself. The witness in Noah's time was, here's all these animals gathering by male and female, walking to one particular spot. There are animals that are in North America, Central America, and South America that they didn't even know about. I believe the buffalo was not known to Europe and all that. Here comes this weird animal. Did the, did the American Indians get a witness of God in Noah's day? The entire world and in their uh, culture has a story of a man and his family building an ark and all the animals coming to it. What do you think? Could they got right with God? Hop on the back of one of those animals and... And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy draws, and take away all thy tent. He's going to make you pure. He's going to make you right. He's going to make you holy. Man cannot take a metal and make it pure. Impossible. But God can. I will restore thy judges as at the first. Moses set up judges in the land. By tens, by hundreds, by thousands, I believe. And he says, if you have a case that's too hard, then you go to the priest, the Levite. And God would answer them. God ain't going to answer America because they don't want God and his word in the courts. That's why the courts is all messed up. When you got a judge, let's say Bethlehem, and two men come up there, and the case is 50-50. There's, there's not even a 49.5%. The judge listens to him. I have no idea. He is the goal to the Levites. The Levites who were the closest ones to God were to hear the case and pray to God and God would give them the answer. And thy counselors, those you go to for, for, a, for a counsel, for advice, as at the beginning. 
You got to go all the way back to where you were. See, you left. I was saved in April 1987, and since that walk, I have gone on my own trail. I have done my own pathways. I've got to go back to Bethel. I've got to go back to Calvary. Get my sins back under the blood and get walking right. When Pilgrim, he's walking the Pilgrim's progress. He goes off and he falls asleep and he loses his role. He goes about walking. Where's my role? He had to go back and find where he fell asleep and find the role that he lost. And you'll find out in your walk as a Christian, you will do a complete circle and end up right back where you were, where God's waiting for you. But how are you doing? You enjoy that little walk you had? Wasted a whole bunch of time? Gathered a bunch of that, that, uh, that knapsack that's on your back, your backpack, all those burdens you got? Wasn't that a nice little trip you did without me? I stayed right here when you left. I told you not to go, but you went about your own way. Listen, I've had that happen more than two or three times in my life. God stayed right where I left, and I went for that little walk, and there he was. Afterwards thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city, Ezekiel 48:35. Later on, Revelation says it's going to be called Sodom and Gomorrah. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, guilty or innocent, and her covers with righteousness. No unholiness. Revelation says, "No liar, no thief, no sorcerer shall enter therein." Pure holiness. So we're looking at a future text that hasn't even happened yet. That faithful city and righteous city that's spoken of in 26, that is the same city that took Jesus Christ out of the city and crucified him upon a hill called Calvary. Do you think that's a righteous and faithful city? That was destroyed in 70 AD? So see, that has that's yet future. That's yet prophecy that has not happened yet. It will happen. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Perish. There will be no transgressors. There will be no sinners. There will be none that forsake God in eternity. Like when the rapture of the church happens, there will be no lost people there at the meeting in the air. If you're not there in the air when we meet at the rapture at the, at the Trump, you're not saved. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. If you are on this earth when the rapture happens, you are not saved. You have got a pure, holy group of people called the Bride of Christ. We will go through the judgment seat of Christ and we will be cleansed. We will be made right. All those left behind are lost. And sadly enough, a lot of people who think they're saved will be left behind. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which they have desired. Oaks, you know, idols, seeking the wood, totem poles. I wonder what they make that little wooden piece for the Ouija board. Oaks is a particular thing in the Bible. There's a woman who died named Deborah. She's buried on the oaks. Pay attention to the word oaks in the Bible. I believe acorns come from oak. Oak is a word in the Bible. It just looks weird. And ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. Now this garden is not the gardens in Sol Song of Solomon. These are gardens for, for gods, for false worship. Little bale bushes. Little 
Fields of Christmas Street. Little Marion Half Shells by a Grove. Little Garden. I never know what that word. Gnomes, what is it? Little, little creatures that, that, you know, you see the statues in the gardens and all that. This is not a garden of favor. This is a garden of worship. Of other gods. A, que a complete imitation of Adam. Adam was a gardener. Mary thought Jesus Christ was, the, was a gardener. Here Satan has his imitation garden. Let's make it like Edom. And let's fool the people and call it natural food, organic food. In the pollution realm that we have in the world today, of air, water, and sea, and dry land and everything like that, there's pollution all around. There's nothing organic. And this food, Genesis 3 says the ground is cursed. How can it be organic? When, it, when Cain brought his offering, he brought the fruit of the ground. And God says, I don't want that. So they're going back to the religion of Cain. Vegetarian. You know, there's religions out there today. You go to their church, you got to be a vegetarian. It's a must. It's not a choice. It's a must. Read the story of Kellogg's and all the, the health business behind that cereal and the health company and the, the institutes that they had. That's a completely interesting story. Involved in a religion, anything but me. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth. And as a garden that has no water. Death. Chapter 65, verses 1 through 5, and Jeremiah 17, 5. A uh, oak that leaf faded is dying. A garden with no water dries up, civil, no life. And the strong shall be as toad. I'm trying to read my note here with my. It's to loose, untwist the strands of a synth synthetic fiber, and the master of it as a spark. And they sh both they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. It's like a, when you got a candle, you got that little. Uh, uh, string, whatever you call it, wick, and you light it. Now, unless you blow upon it, it won't go out. Unless you run out of wax. But the picture's here. Uh, you light that that toe, that synthetic fiber, the strands of a rope. You're going to burn and burn and burn. Picture's hell. For what? False worship of, of, of anything but God. For those who have been cleansed. Verse 25, 26, 27, 28. Those gods that God has judged. And God has found righteousness in them. God has made them pure. Anything else who evolved in false worship of false gods. Burning. An unquenchable fire. How do you not get hell? Burnt together, and none shall quench them. Where on earth do you find a fire that burns for all eternity without adding nothing to it? You don't. It's hell. Hell is all through the Bible. I bet you they changed that verse. To those who will do right and want of God... They'll get righteousness. They'll get what, to be with God. They'll be the, likened to the holy faithful city. And to those who don't want. Who want to remain in their filth and their, their cancer. 
and their illness. Who won't come to God when God says come. They'll get hell. And God is righteous because he'll judge them. And before he judges them, he'll declare who he is. Listen, when we go door knock and preach on the street, giving out gospel tracts, we don't tell we don't talk about God the creator to heaven and earth. We talk about God the Savior. Jesus Christ. We proclaim who God is that they need today. They need a savior. They don't need a creator. You can learn about cre the created act of God after you're saved, but you need a God that saves. That's who we proclaim. And the choice they make either to get right. And God shall judge them and, and purify them and make them right and make them in righteousness. And those who don't get right, they shall be died, verse 30, and burned in 31. So in Isaiah chapter 1, you see the gospel, you see the way of God, you see the way of righteousness, and you see the way of, of, of sinner. You see the eternal enjoyment of God, and you see the eternal damnation away from God. And if you only got an Old Testament, Isaiah 1 and Isaiah 53. You're dealing with a Jew who does not believe the New Testament. Run to Isaiah 1 and show him Isaiah 53 and whatever else God will show you. you got to use the Old Testament for a Jew. You've got to show him God. you got to show him who God is. you got to show him the judgment. You're not going to get him saved that afternoon. Because with that, you got to bring him to the Messiah. 